this video, I'm going to go over what is expected of you in terms of your practice data. You'll also see some of this is laid out in the organism handout, uh, but definitely take this precedent. Uh, this definitely proceeds over that. Uh, you'll also see it described in the instructions for the blend assignment as well, but I wanted to provide some further de details in case you get confused about some of the bullet points. So in terms of your practice data, we have three goals in mind. First, we want to figure out what your study bird is going to be. So it needs to be a bird that's present in your study locations. Second thing we're looking for is can we um, collect data and do we have any further questions about how the data collection is going to go about? And same thing with data analysis. Can we perform the simple calculations, not so simple calculations, that were described as part of our bird workshop? And of course, you can review any of this information from that workshop video as you see necessary. I'm going to go through some of it for this video, but feel free to review it as um, in the previous one as well. So what do I mean by determining your study bird? So when you go to your park, you need to be listening for every or any of the study birds that we talked about. So one of the six, whether that's the blue jay, the northern mockingbird, um, the titmouse, the Carolina Wren, Northern Cardinal, or the Chickadee. And we gave you some mnemonics, um, how to identify their songs and calls. Feel free while you're on your way to your study location, try to listen to some of them so that you're kind of prepared. Um, you can also play them while you're doing this practice data because it's all about trying to figure out um, which bird is prevalent in that particular location. Um, because we definitely want you to be able to hear the bird that you're studying. Um, so listen for that, um, those sounds as you're going um, to your study location. Now the other part of that is you're also going to want to coordinate that with your group members. So once you guys have all collected your practice data, you've listened to what birds are present, you're going to want to talk to talk about it as a group to choose what study bird you guys are going to look at um, as a group together. Now remember, when you go to your park, where I want you to actually go through the data collection process um, so that you can experience what it's going to be like when you do it for real. Um, and remember, when we talk about data collection, you're going to be walking that transect, following the Imlin strip method. The transect should be between 0 0.8 kilometers and 1.2 kilometers. So while you're at the park, try to find your locations, whether that's uh, trails or slight trails um, that you're following, uh, that where the birds are most active, um, that would be more meaningful for your study. So your first practice data, you can I would pick a location, test it out, um, but then also kind of walk around the park and see what other locations might be like. Um, you might want to change your transect. So if you want to take data in another location, you might do a half a data set um, for another location because maybe you didn't hear as many birds along the transect that you thought you might hear them from. Um, so definitely test that out. Second thing, make sure that you're getting there early in the morning because we want to get there during the period that the birds are most active and when you're actually going to be doing data collection. Now remember when you're walking this transect, it's all about a slow, steady pace. Um, so we want to be going at somewhere around like um, a pace of 29. Um, and I'll show you in a little bit here with the All Trails app so you can see that. Um, but, but a nice leisurely pace. Um, and feel free, take a moment um, before you get started, kind of blink your mind, uh, listen to the area, feel free, listen to your bird to kind of tune yourself into what sound you're looking for um, before you get started. Um, and that's what you're going to do. So walk your 0.8 and 1.2 kilometers, and you can actually see that on your um, app that we're going to talk about in a second. And remember that we're looking on both sides of that full transect. So we're looking at a distance of about 125 meters away from that transect. Um, whether we see them, hear them, or see them or hear them. And we're trying to identify song versus call in this instance. It is practice data, so I know you're still practicing learning um, songs and calls, and you're definitely going to hone in on whatever study bird you um, choose. So for this video, or for this and since it's okay if you're not sure which one it might be. Um, try to do your best just based on what you're hearing um, in the field. Now before you get started in terms of your data collection, before you even get to the field, I would go ahead and take care of this. So you're going to want to create this table like we talked about from the video workshop where you're going to record all your data. Um, that includes like transects, date, you can, some of this stuff, it's okay um, because some of it you're still figuring out like bird species, we don't know just yet because you're still working through that. Hike speed and all that will be given from the app. You'll also figure out um, transect length from the app because some of that stuff you're going to be figuring out as part of this data collection. Um, but make sure that you create this first in your notebook 
before you go out for your collection. The other thing you're going to do before you get started or get to your location is you're going to want to, want to download the All Trails app um, on your mobile device. And this is what you're going to use to keep track of your actual data collection. You will need to create an account that's just so that you can record and it'll save all your um, hikes, data collections, um, that we're going to call them, uh, associated with a project. And you can see over here on the right hand side what it's going to look like. You're going to open the app and you'll see a center record button in the bottom. And you'll just press record and it'll record your location as well as your pace. So you can see our average pace is 3153, so not bad for this um, hike. Of course, this wasn't me a data collection, I was just out hiking. Um, but and a good example of what could be occurring. It also shows you your change in elevation that's occurring along my uh, your location. So this hike that I took, the change in elevation was 597 feet. So I hope that we, of course, want to keep our variables constant. So along our elevation or along our transect, we shouldn't be seeing such a dramatic change in elevation gain. Um, but again, trying to keep the pace, um, it'll show you the link too as well so that you can utilize that as part of your transect link. You will uh, take screenshots of this and then you'll submit that to me. But when you take your screenshot, make sure that it provides the date that you actually went on the location. Um, all the data in terms of the length and the pace are the main ones I'm looking for. And then a map of the location so that I know that you went where you were supposed to. Um, and then you'll just upload those with in PDF format with the rest of your data that you're submitting. And all of that is described in the assignment submission. Now, once you've collected your data, I want you to actually do the data analysis associated with it, meaning that I want you to determine what the full detection strip is. I want you to determine the population estimate and then calculate your coefficient of detectability. Now, if you need a course for, to review how to calculate these, um, make sure to watch the workshop video again, just that particular piece, because I know a lot of students get a little confused on what they're taking the average of, where they're looking for a 20% drop. Um, so please make sure to look over it, and that's what this practice data is for, because I want to see that you know how to do it before we start collecting actual data, and then it should become relatively um, uh, repetitive, so you'll know how to do it relatively quickly. Um, so that's what your goal is, is we need to go into the field, figure out what your study bird is, take some practice data, and then we're going to analyze it so that we're prepared for those first six study um, data sets. If you have any questions, of course, reach out, and thanks for tuning in.